Welcome to What a Creep, the show with Margot Donahue and Sonia Mansfield talking about creeps from the past to the present. This is your quick guide to the biggest creeps, jerks, assholes, and losers, the best of the worst. From two nice ladies who want the world to be a little less creepy. Welcome back to What a Creep. This is Margot Donahue, and my cohort and creepitude, as always, is the amazing Sonia Mansfield. Hey, Sonia. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. Yes, you are my co-host and not Tony Robbins. What? Apple? Apple has Tony Robbins, like, tagged on our podcast, like he's one of our guest hosts. I'm like, uh, he was kind of a guest on the show. (laughs) Like we made fun of him for an hour, but okay. <laughs> if you're expecting yeah, Tony like, Robbins to join in the discussion, he won't be here. <laughs> He's not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> so we are the podcast that talks about creeps from the past to the present. What we do is one of us picks a creep and the other one is challenged to come up with somebody who's a non-creep. We are going to be talking about Megan Kelly today, and, mm-hmm. and I think you'll enjoy our non-creep today. She is a non-creep from the past that I super enjoy. There's a couple of TV movies that have been about her from my ute that I remember enjoying. <laughs> Your ute. <laughs> my ute. But first of all, I just want to let you know that you could find us on a basic Facebook page, but we don't really check that. That's just a place where people go to complain about our language. We use salty language in this program. Fuck yeah. We tend to be much more interactive in our Facebook group. You do have to answer a few questions before you join the Facebook group, but that is the place where we are, like I just said, more interactive. We are on Twitter at CreepPod for now. (laughs) <laughs> we'll see what happens with Creepod and anybody who works for Twitter. We're really sorry what's going on over there right now. Total bummer. We're so sorry, everyone at Twitter. Like that sucks. It really fucking sucks. He's such a he's such a trash can. Uh, we're at Creepod on Twitter because somebody had what a creep on Twitter for over ten years and never used it. Creep. We'll try something else so on social media. But anyway, uh, we're on Instagram. What a creep podcast. Yeah. We interact there, and we yeah. have um, an old timey email where you could reach us. So, we got a great email this week from Kristen. Um, it's what a creep podcast at gmail.com. That's where you can ask for stickers. And Kristen likes to put one on her old timey paper calendar that she keeps on her desk, and she nice. needs a new one for the new year. So, I am dropping one in the mail for her. <laughs> Good call. Yes. So anyway, Sonia, do you want to talk about our website real quick? Yes. You can go to whatacreeppodcast.com and it's everything you ever wanted to know about our podcast, but we're afraid to ask. It has links to all of our episodes and in those episodes are our show notes because we source every single episode we do. We're not making this shit up and we want to give credit where credit is due. So You can find that there. There's also a link to our merch shop where you can get t-shirts and journals and tote bags and all kinds of good things with the What a Creep logo on it. The shirts are super comfy. Tis the holiday season. (laughs) Get your stuff now. And there's also a link to our uh, Patreon page. You want to tell them about that? I want to say thank you to Marissa, Sands, Mom, and Lisa for just joining our Patreon page. Thank you all so much. Also, I wanted to say that the first four seasons of the show are on the Patreon page. We put out two bonus episodes a month. Sometimes we just squeak one in at the very last minute. And then we put out a newsletter every month. Sonia puts that together. We're getting one out this weekend. Yes. And it's just a way to help pay for the cost of putting the show together. We really appreciate all of you for helping us with that. We also just want to say... We understand that money's tight and things are kind of crazy in the world right now. So if you can't Mm -hmm. make that kind of investment, we totally understand. If you could just leave us a few stars wherever you get your podcasts. We want to thank the people in iTunes for leaving us a good review, uh, especially Steph B-Day Girl for (laughs) leaving us such a nice review in iTunes. But also, y'all in Spotify have been just leaving us stars left and right. Thank you. Thank you so much at Good Pods and stuff like that. Or seriously, just enjoy the show. Just yeah. have a laugh. 
We're got, that tell makes a fr- seven. or tell a friend. Exactly, tell a friend. And uh, what else do I want to say? I just want to say um, I've been on a book tour for my book filmed in Brooklyn. I want to yes, thank- you have. And I want to thank uh, Jackie Cashian for the Dork Forest. She let me come on to talk about my love for Stephen King, and it was a hoot. It was so much. Can't fun. wait. I'm listening to that today. I also was on The Animal That Changed You, and I have a story in there about an edibles gone wrong episode, Mm. but it also was heartwarming, but it, you know. Yes. And uh, also I was on Maximum Film, which is from the Maximum Fun folks. So thank you all very much for letting me on that show. And if you're coming over from there, thank you for making the journey to What a Creep. Yes. Welcome. Are you you talked out? Are you sure you want to record? No. (laughs) I'm getting more and more egotistical, Sonia. I'm really. <laughs> no, she isn't. Everything's <laughs> everything's fine. Okay. So we are talking about, I think we got on through everything, right? Yeah, I think so. You know, some people make that joke like 35 minutes, minutes into a podcast. All right. So let's get into our topic today. <laughs> we're not that bad. <laughs> we're Yeah, we're not that bad. Hey, we have housekeeping things we have to do. We have to. We like to ease into the show. That's just how how we roll. We're chatty. Yes, we we are chatty people. We go on tangents, but we always have a a destination in front of us. Yes. Yes. Are you ready to get into this creep? She has been in the news lately, Sonia. I know. I know. And she's been on the list for a while. We're going to talk about... Megan Kelly, y'all. I'm going to call, pull up my notes here. Uh, trigger warnings, racism, sexism, sexual harassment, and uh, the debate over what color Santa is. <laughs> that in mind. Uh, sources for this episode. Again, we source everything. The Advocate, Britannica, The Cut, The Daily Beast, Gawker, Media Matters, MSNBC, The New York Post, Watch, I'm sorry, Rolling Stone, Up Rocks, USA Today, Wonket, and our good friends at Wikipedia. Megan Kelly wasn't just one of the beautiful blonde talk show hosts on Fox. She was the beautiful blonde talk show host on Fox News. Her show, The Kelly File, was one of the network's highest rated shows, even beating The O'Reilly Factor. <laughs> what a beautiful blonde he was. <laughs> Yes. He sucked. We already did an episode on him. Uh, She left Fox News for a very short-lived stint at NBC, where she was fired for defending blackface. We'll get to that in a little bit. Now she hosts a talk show and a podcast called The Megyn Kelly Show that's on Sirius XM. And I think you can watch it on YouTube, but you don't want to because it's icky. Um, Megyn Kelly is an opportunist. She'll even describe herself pretty much is that she'll say i'm a soul i'm a soul soulless lawyer she once told the daily beast give any opinion and i can argue it um i'm not convinced that megan kelly actually believes all the ignorant crap she spews but it doesn't matter she does it for money and that's fucking gross she's a pick me girl and a racist what a creep Let's start at the beginning. And let's just say this is a nice break from the child molesters and the serial killers and the other kind of murderers we cover. So she's just a basic asshole. Yeah, she's an asshole. Exactly. For sure. Megan Marie Kelly was born November 18th, 1970. Hey, your birthday's coming, Megan. (laughs) How do I wrap this middle finger to you? (laughs) She was born in... Champaign, Illinois. Champaign, yep. sure. Yeah. Uh, she was raised in Syracuse, New York. She's the third of three children. Uh, her father was Edward Kelly, who was a professor at the State University of New York at Albany. And her mother, Linda, was a homemaker until her father died in 1985. And then her mother worked as a nurse at a veterans administration hospital oh, to wow. support the family. Wow. Yeah, Kelly went to Syracuse University. She majored in political science and graduated with a bachelor's degree in 92. She went to law school. She went to Albany Law School. She edited the law review. She was a member of the Student Senate, like clearly a bright Mm -hmm. person. She's not a dumb dumb. No. No. She She got her law degree, 
Uh, she was working as an associate attorney in a Chicago law firm, and then she lady, later started working for a multi, multinational law firm. Sorry, everybody, I'm stumbling today, uh, called Jones Day, and she was there for nine years. She was on the track to make partner, but it was long hours. Yeah. You know, um, it's a very demanding job. And she took a class on reporting and decided she was interested in getting into journalism. So she did an internship uh, at an NBC News branch in Chicago. A friend helped her film a sample reel. And despite her inexperience, she began approaching television stations in search of a newscaster position. Um, she actually wrote in her memoir, which I did not read, by the way, but um, it's called Settle for More. Um, she said she was actually turned down for jobs because she was, quote, too perfect. She's hot. LOL. She's very beautiful. Yes. She's too perfect. So. In 2003. She's the closest thing to perfect I've ever seen. Remember the movie? <laughs> that was the movie theme. <laughs> that was the movie theme to perfect. Oh, yes. Jamie yes, Lee thank Curtis you. Movie. Yes. Uh, she moved to Washington, D.C. in 2003, and she was actually hired by the ABC affiliate there as a general assignment reporter. The following year, she applied for a job at Fox News, and she got it because, let's be honest here, Fox News, they don't care if their journalists have journalist experience. <laughs> she's like i said very beautiful and she's very smart mm -hmm. so she's good on camera i have to say she's, yeah yeah she's she's yeah. an asshole but she's <laughs> she is smart and she's beautiful so she started with legal segments that she was doing on brit hume show and then she was doing weekly segments on uh creep bill o'reilly show we've already done an episode on him go back and listen um by 2007 she's doing co-hosting duties on america's newsroom uh, in February 2010, she's hosting her own two-hour afternoon show, America Live. And then she started getting media attention outside of Fox News. There was the presidential election in 2012. Um, she's hosting the elect election night coverage for Fox. And it's projected that Obama's going to win Ohio. Mm -hmm. And the, like, the team that's working the desks at Fox is like, we're projecting it. He's going to win Ohio. And Carl Rove, super creep Carl Rove, who strangely we have not done an episode on yet. We need to put him on um, the list. Yeah. Um, he objected to this projection. Like, you know, uh, and she actually walked backstage. This is all on camera and asked Rove, is this just math that you do as a Republican to make yourself feel better? Or is this real? And when she did this, it kind of positioned her as someone at Fox News who maybe doesn't always fall in line. She has a spine. Yeah. She expressed her support for gay rights on the air, but she also, you know, she would bash the Obama administration all the time. She always talked shit about, like, Black Lives Matter, you know, protests and things like that because she's, she's, pretty, she's pretty fucking racist, basically. <laughs> like, she would be fine with gay people, but she's not fine with trans people, you know, and, and then we're going to get into it. So in October 2013, she starts a nightly show called The Kelly File. <laughs> and that was like their one of their top shows. But she really isn't. And she wasn't she still isn't like the liberal hero that they thought she was. Right. So on her show, she got into a heated argument with her show staff about using a caption where they referred to Michelle Obama as Obama's baby mama. Oh, for fuck's sakes. I'm like, she's not his baby mama. They're married. Right. Like, it's, you know, and she got into a huge fight with her staff. She wanted they, you, to use it or she didn't? Yes. Oh, for God's She sakes. wanted to use it. Um, and then she was outraged when she was told it was racist. And then... Fox News was forced to apologize for it, and she passed it off as like a junior staffer did that. It's just a joke, you know, kind of thing. It's just it's fucking racist. Like you wouldn't say that about Barbara Bush. Like it's something you or say. Trump's wife or Melania. Yes, exactly. Oh, she's, so, she's so shitty. Uh, you know, she and she 
would go to the extreme, just like they all do on Fox News, right? In so many ways, she's not any different than a lot of other people on Fox News. You know, she warned that the Obama administration is going to force communities that are, quote, too white and too privileged to embrace diversity, whether they want it or not. What does that mean? It sounds like a threat. (sighs) You know, um, the Justice Department did a report where they found that uh, the police department in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, was super racist. Like they found all these emails that were racist. And this is where, by the way, a man was killed. Um, Shit. I wrote his name down. Where is it? Ah, Michael Brown. Thank you. There it is. Mm-hmm. Michael Brown. Michael Brown was killed and they did this huge investigation. It really is like where the Black Lives Movement started. Um, she comes out and says that there are very few companies in America where you won't find racist emails. That, really? So that makes it okay? And really? I'm all... Really? Because that seems like a fucking problem, Megan. Yeah, that seems bad. Yeah, she, you know, she loves to talk shit about the Black Lives Matter protests. Like when a black person is killed by a cop, she's like, it's she blames it on black communities because she says they're anti-cop. She loves to use the word thug when describing African-American people, you know, um, unarmed African-American people. Um, should just be following directions, you know, and they wouldn't get murdered and all these things. Which is, there are several examples, video examples that you could see that yes. it's not true. Yes. Speaking of, we're going to go to that right now. So, hold on, I'm moving something. Okay. So, in 2015, there's this video that co- goes out and it's this white white police officers like a few of them show up at a pool party oh this oh fuck I know what you're talking about yeah and it's um a majority of like african-american kids teenagers at this pool party in texas and i don't somebody there some white person was like i don't think they're supposed to be here which they were totally fine to be there by the way um and they tackle one of these kids kids by the way and like draw a gun on them like they like knocked a girl down to the ground and pinned her to the ground and here comes megan kelly well she's no saint she's a kid a child she's a a kid also in a bathing suit and flip-flops who's she gonna hurt right and no saint because the cops told them to leave and she didn't like immediately like run away you know it's just it's shit like that that's like normalizing that kind of behavior that is so gross black it's people just gross. in her view have to be saintly yes or forget it yes or they're or they're, they're asking for trouble yes and exactly white that. teenagers can be fucking animals that you see on mtv spring break yes and nobody crush nobody questions that yeah exactly the cops are like never called no Right. And it, it, yeah, she's because she's she's racist. Like yeah. um, this one is super famous. So in December 2013, Slate ran this op ed called Santa Claus should not be a white man anymore. And Kelly and her fellow like commentators on her show were just clutching their pearls about this article. And she went on this thing where it's like for all you kids watching at home, Santa is white. Jesus was a white man, too. Like, you know, he he's a historical figure, and that's a fact, as is Santa. And I just want kids to know that. And it's like, bitch, please. Well, first like, of all, how many kids are watching your show? Did you not know friends that went to the black mall and had a black Santa to take a picture yeah. with their kid? I mean, like, it's not a big, I mean, what the fuck? What it's else so is going sh- on in the world that you have to, like, create a problem with this? Exactly. That's what you're doing with your intelligence. Because she's not stupid. Yeah. She's not it's, dumb. It's, it's just race baiting. Yeah. Yeah. It's like culture war shit, right? Right. It's right. Just, and also, who cares? Who cares if a black family wants to have a black Santa and a white family wants It's fine. Just have your fucking Santa. But who she's, cares? She's like, if you give up this, you're going to have to give up all these other things. 
Yes. It's like the kitty litter that they have to have in the hallway and closets in school because the kid's transgender. Oh, wait, Joe Rogan was lying about that. No shit, really? Like, it's little yeah. things. If you give up the black Santa Sonia, then you're going to have to accept the drag queens. And that means the kids are going to listen to this. It's so yes. stupid. She she contributes to this culture war. She and does. at the same time critiques it and is like how oh, how dare you and then but steps she, aside and i'm just a reporter and i'm a journalist yeah i'm just asking questions fuck you yeah. speaking of fuck you she loved having racist ex-cop mark Furman on her show oh boy on the regular she. yeah um she would bring him on to analyze racial issues and police brutality By cases way, a guy who collected nazi paraphernalia too yeah yeah um he's a real this treat. is like this is like having O.J. Simpson on your show as a domestic violence expert. Right. Like, he's a racist prick. And it's like, to bring him on as any kind of fucking expert on how people should behave is laughable. Like, she also um, would also have the president of the Family Research Council and future What a Creep episode, <laughs> uh, Tony Perkins as a frequent guest on her show always like throwing around his baseless like lgbtq plus fear rhetoric that, yeah fear mongering shit um so she's doing her show it's getting good ratings she's acting like a trash can on tv and people love it uh so then in 2015 she moderates the republican presidential debate with donald trump and countless others i can't remember how many republicans it was were on a that stage. rogues gallery of yeah doofuses it was a who's who of who's gross basically <laughs> it was a bunch of nasty nasty people um and she asked then presidential candidate donald trump whether his a man of his temperament should be elected president because his thing was he says shitty things about women surprise you know mr grab them by the pussy mr right. you know calling women dogs and bimbos and pigs and blah blah and she calls him out on it rightly and he doesn't like that he doesn't like when people call him out um he refused to participate in the following debate that she was monitoring he did an interview where he said there was blood coming out of her eyes blood coming out of her wherever meaning she must have been on her period right um and continued to insult her calling her crazy megan um this is again where again like media outlets want to grab on to megan kelly and be like this is the liberal hero we need or or this is a moderate i think is what they were really hoping and you know, she starts, there's, um, by the way, her and Trump have made up. They're totally fine. She now. totally, yeah, gave him a pass for all that bullshit. Yeah, she she kisses his ass all the time mm -hmm. uh, now and has refused to accept any responsibility for the fact that, like, her actions at Fox News even led to a Donald Trump in the first place. But whatever. So, actually, before I get into all her media love that she got. In 2016, former Fox News host Gretchen Carlson files a sexual harassment lawsuit against Fox News CEO Roger Ailes, and Kelly joins that as well. And it was a movie uh, called Bombshell. Did you see it? Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, I didn't see it because you told me it wasn't good. And no. I was like, I am not going to watch that. Um and I'm sorry that she went through sexual harassment, by the Nobody way. Nobody deserves that. Nobody. No. Nobody. And we've talked about this. Yeah. Show. Like, women are just trying to do their fucking jobs. And yeah. here comes fucking creepy busy hands that wants to kiss you and grab you. And then when you're like, Megan, no, thanks. All yeah. of them should just do their fucking jobs without having to put up with that shit. Yes. I don't so, like her, but she doesn't have to deal with, shouldn't have to put up with that shit. No. For a second. Absolutely. And I would totally yes. defend her to the end Absolutely. Power. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, and I, I, Made sure I wanted to mention it here. I wasn't leaving it out. Like, this is a thing that happened. Because, so she does the thing with Trump, and this comes out too. And that's when, like, the media is like, here's this. There, I, I think they really thought she was, like, moderate centrist kind she of person. flashes of, like, very moderate, uh, you know, she makes some sense. Like, she's just, yeah. 
Yeah. And then so, she like goes, oh, wait a second. I need that person for an interview one day. So I'm going to. Yeah. So she, all the media, all these different media outlets start like showcasing her. So she gets this like glowing profile in Vanity Fair. It's like she's the brightest star at Fox News and a newly minted role model for women. And like all this, you know, she's she, there's like a whole thing in Vogue where they're like, she's a force for good. I'm like, LOL. And all of this attention starts a bidding war to get her like her contract is almost up at Fox News. And in January 2017, she leaves Fox News for NBC News, where she's going to get a daytime talk show, a Sunday night news magazine and a correspondent for their like events and political coverage. And she was going to get between 15 and $20 million a year. It's a pretty big contract. I take it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I'm available. I'm, I'm not busy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take half that. So her time at NBC was very short lived. Uh, she started there in the spring of 2017. She was fired by October 2018 because during her 9 a.m. hour, because she had this whole nine nine to 10 hour of the Today Show was Megyn Kelly. Which, by the way, was already popular with Tamron Hall and yeah. uh, Al Roker, right? Like, it was right. already a thing. Yeah. But they really wanted that blonde over there. Like, somebody had a boner for her. Just, I just, for sure, a ratings boner for her. Like, just they thought she was going to be, well, they thought she was going to be the next big thing. Yeah. And she wasn't like the ratings were shit. Like, yeah. And then she did some interview segments. She did one with Putin and it was all like super softballs, not hard hitting. She did another one with Alex Jones where it was like not well received to say the least. Um, and then she's in her, you know, one hour segment on the Today Show. And she goes into this thing about how blackface is fine for Halloween. Well, she said she didn't understand. Why is it a problem? Like, is white yeah, if face I'm a gonna... problem and, ba and blackface? Why are they problems? When And it's like, <sighs> white face isn't a thing. And yes. I've known blackface is a problem since Give Me a Break when that was an episode on Give Me a Break. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's a famous episode, y'all, by Joey the way. Joey Lawrence, he got, he got told straight. Yeah. By Nell Carter told him. Nell Carter. Nell Carter. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she told him what was up. You don't do that. Yeah. Like, and she, I, I forget what she says. She says something about like dressing up as Diana Ross or whatever. I don't know. She, she defended it. And then uh, everyone was upset, obviously, like Twitter blew up. Al Roker was like, what the fuck? Basically, yeah, Tamron like, Hall demanded. and I had a good hour there and now this is what yeah. we're doing. So she had to issue an apology. She said that, you know, she was really sorry. She said, I really thought it was okay if it was part of a Halloween costume. I was wrong. I'm sorry. You know, um, but that on top of like her crappy ratings and NBC's like, how about if we just give you $30 million and you go away? Which she took. Which like, I would take too, by the way. I'm willing to yeah. go to NBC like a fool of myself <laughs> yeah. for $30 million. I will. I'll tell you right now. I'll say the shittiest stuff you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> I've covered creeps for two years now. Like. You're all, I got it. I got it down. <laughs> yeah. She, so she leaves NBC. And then after that, like, I don't know. I think she, I think she tried, she's trying still to like get her Fox News people back, you know? So she's kind of doubled down on being as shitty as she can be on her show which, like I said, is a podcast, but also I think you can watch it on YouTube or whatever. So here's here's some of the shitty things she's doing. She loves to go on angry rants about Anthony, Dr. Fauci from the National Health in, you know, Institute. Um, she claims that it's his fault that the pandemic was a thing, uh, you know, because he's responsible for the virus, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, She literally has said he's responsible for people losing their jobs and scaring kids by making them wear masks. Um, she never mentions that, like, millions of people died all over the fucking world that from also, this virus. Doctors have worn masks for ye a century now. It, <laughs> I mean, it's... 
it's so stupid. Like this whole thing about like it's Fauci. This this was a a pandemic all over the world. Fauci doesn't have that much sway with the fucking world, you weirdos. Um, you know, even on so one time on her show, she's like. I stayed out of the sun for 30 years so I could have decent skin by the time I was 51. And now I have to wear a disgusting mask. You've also, you're also like, God bless you. You have perfect genes and you probably had some yeah. nice work done because you have 30 million in the kitty. Yeah. <laughs> you get the right, and you live in the Upper East Side or something. Yeah. I'm like, again, like no fucking empathy. No. It's. It's all about... And you don't actually have to wear one, by the way. You could just not wear one, but places have a right to say, sorry, you yes. can't come in here. You have to yeah. wear shoes. You have to, like... Because that also tracks in yeah. germs and shit. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, people are allowed to have rules. What an asshole. Yeah, she's, she's given a lot... She's given airtime to, like, the... Fauci, like, was involved with China to create the virus. Yes. You know, yes, she yes, yes, has tweeted multiple times that um, the COVID vaccine has killed a quote unquote scary number of kids. <laughs> also, lying. not true. Not, not true. true. You know, it's just shit like that. She's she's pretty transphobic. You know, she'll claim that there's these great quote unquote crazy trans activists out there that are making young gay men trans. That's not a thing that's happening. Mm -mm. You know, she criticizes medical associations that support trans children. You know, she's equated gender affirming care to conversion therapy. It is not conversion therapy. Mm -hmm. These are just garbage things you know um there was a story about a texas school that uh like fired some staff members for refusing to uh call refer to a transgender boy as a boy like using the correct pronouns and things like that and she did a show or did a segment on it and then proceeded to like purposely like misgender this child the entire time it's just like garbage shit like that where you're like really what bitch? Do you gain from that exactly so i think it was last year the u.s open this is tennis y'all uh i don't know shit about tennis but they opened they wanted to create stress rooms for athletes and they were doing this because one of their popular players her name is naomi osaka came out and said like you know, she needed, like, she needed, like, she was taking, oh, she took a break from tennis to t to focus on her mental health. And they were like, you know what, this, being a professional athlete can be really stressful. We should give them space to, like, deal with their shit, right? So they create these rooms that are, like, quiet for people to calm down or get in their right frame of mind before they Meditate, go out. And, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Which, by the way... Do National Treasure Dolly Parton has rooms like this okay. at Dollywood for people. If they said that's a room for prayer, would she have a problem with it? No. Thank you. No, she'd be totally fine with it. Yeah. She, you know, so she's shitting all over it and she tweets out to her like millions of followers. Good Lord, please never let the snowflakes who need this sign up for our military. Those are I'm two like, different things. Two different things. Also, we have a lot of veterans in this country that have, have a lot of, yeah, have a lot of mental health issues and your fucking tool. Your mother worked at a veterans hospital. She knows damn well what she's doing. She's just being shitty. I, she's got, ugh. anyway. She's so gross. Yeah. She refers to herself as a conservative feminist. And I just want to say there's no such thing. No. Either you support rights for all women or you don't. That's the thing. And, you know, so the Supreme Court recently overturned Roe versus Wade. And she tweets out, like, whether you are pro-abortion or not, this was the right decision legally. And she says the court set things straight. Now it's where it belongs in the hands of the people. I'm like, it isn't in the hands of the people. Mm -mm. She's so shitty. She... She doesn't believe in the gender pay gap. She doesn't think that's a thing. She's referred to it as a meme. I don't even know what that means. And she says affirmative consent on, ca like, 
consent for sex. This is a whole thing that they want to do on college campuses, right? Where you need to, I don't know, get consent before you have sex with people. She says it's anti-men. Ugh. <laughs> yes. She, in her book, she claims that she's a guy's girl yeah. who used to hang out with powerful men and has no problem with locker room talk. It's like serious pick-me-girl vibes. Yeah. She defended Hobby Lobby's challenge to the Affordable Care Act, which, if you don't remember, they didn't want to pay for women's birth control. This was a whole thing. Yeah, How dare. Did. Yes. And then, of course, came to the defense of gross, disgusting Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh when he was very credibly accused of sexual assault by Dr. Christine Blessy Ford. Keep in mind, this is a woman who filed her own sexual harassment suit and really you think would have some empathy and would believe women. No, she it does really not. happened to her, but it didn't happen to somebody else. Exactly. Just this past defense past December, she's on Twitter defending men's rights activist, because that's a thing that exists. Jordan Peterson no. on her podcast. <laughs> of course yes. she did. Yeah. She Our rattled off. Jordan Peterson. <laughs> men, are, men are struggling. Sonia. You don't know how hard it is to be a man right now. We have to wash. We have to wash our booty holes. We have to be respectful to women. It's the worst. But how do you get consent? I don't understand. What does no mean anyway? They're just words. <laughs> She's she. So she rattled off like a whole list of shit about like why it's so hard to be a man right now. You know, she noted that, like, suicide rate among men in the country is, like, really high. And I'm, like, I'm sure this is all women's fault, right? Right. Yeah. Um, You know, she recently pulled her own children out of schools in New York because she said that there's far left indoctrination going on because they had to learn that trans people exist, Um, you know, or that they had to learn that black people were Enslaved. slaves at one point yes so any kind of education that's honest about like the mistreatment of black people by white people is considered racist against white people according to kelly so that is called far left indoctrination to her and she pulled her kids out of the school and then she went on bill maher to talk about it in case you want to know just how shitty she is <sighs> i hate her she thinks the media is over like overplaying the insurrection it's so mu it's not that bad oh okay <laughs> bitch watch the videos she loves to refer to aoc as um a moron i'm like i think she's jealous yeah i think she's jealous of aoc she calls her a moron she refers to her as the kardashian of congress i think she's very 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 yeah. jealous she has people like Alan Dershowitz on her podcast all the time. He's a creep. fuck Alan Dershowitz. We've had creeps like that recently. She's been in the news because she's been saying shitty things about Meghan Markle. And the things she's saying are so dumb. So Meghan Markle has her own po podcast now. And she refers to Prince Harry as my husband because he's her husband. Right. I think they got married or something. Yeah, and Kelly's just like, you know, we get it. You congratulations, congratulations. You got the big bear. You just want us to know. I'm like, bitch. Who, she's how else is she, she supposed to refer to him? I don't know. I'm like, are you? Did you want to marry Prince Harry? Are you like super jealous? I'm sure she is. Like, it's such a weird thing to be mad about. I, I, right? Yeah. Megan could do no right for her, I'm sure. Right. It's so, it's such a weird thing. She also came out against student loan forgiveness. Why is she against it? Because she had to pay for college. So you have to, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. You know, and she said, and she says, like, you know, we took out loans, but we paid them back. But I think this is the very telling part of she said this whole fucking rant on her show and she said these people are going to go to college they're going to be elite graduates who are going to spend their years in journalism trying to shame half of america for doing absolutely nothing wrong 
what she's saying here is we don't want people to get educated because then they are smart enough to call us out on our bullshit. Yeah, well, that's that's that, been the problem. Yeah, that's what she said. She said the quiet part out loud. Right. I'm like, and then, of course, most recently, um, somebody broke into Nancy Pelosi's house here in San Francisco mm-hmm. and attacked her 80 year old husband is he 82 or Mm -hmm. something um he was looking for nancy to murder her or kneecap her or whatever she's like the third most powerful person in this country and people are like "Eh, what are you gonna do but megan kelly's on her show like throwing around all the conspiracy theories that like that uh, Paul was drunk, that Paul let open the door for this guy, that he's a spurned ex-lover of Paul. Paul's 82. Do you think he's like going to orgies and shit? Like he's not. He's 82. It was middle of the night. They're like, he was in his yeah. underwear. I'm like, he sleeps in his underwear. Because he sleeps in exactly. I'm like, I don't think he was being pervy here. Like, even if he was drunk, he's in so his own like, bed. Right. I go to bed drunk all the time. We all do. <laughs> you know, and she's just doing the, I know enough to smell a rat. You know, You're when are the police? You're yourself there, Missy. No shit. That's your upper lip, Megan. Like, she's covering up the truth. Like, who's covering up the truth here? There's no evidence. Bleh, all the shit. It's just all these fucking lies. It's all just to appeal to that, like, Fox News base that she kind of lost when she went mainstream. And now she wants to get it back. And I mean, you could go right now into any one of my sources, type in Megyn Kelly, and you'll see the most fucked up headlines of shit Megyn Kelly has said over the years. I had to keep it to 3,000 words. so I couldn't keep going. But she's like, she's just like sexist against other women, unless they're like white women like her. Mm -hmm. Um, She's racist. She's transphobic like she is not a good person and she is not some sort of feminist icon no she's mean and shitty yes she's mean she's shitty m- and petty and she's yes. doing a lot more with her power and she just doesn't see it she's privileged no. and she doesn't see that she's privileged no she doesn't fuck her so seriously fuck her that's our creep megan kelly good job sonia Thank you, my friend. All right, my friend, let's do this. Let's take a quick breaky break and yeah. we'll come back with someone who's not a creep. She's no Phew. longer with us, so she can't beat the shit out of this woman. No, sorry. No violence here. No violence. But we'll take a quick break and then we will come back with a really cool not creep. I come in peace, Sonia. I, I don't I don't know what, what, what came over me. You're fine. Okay, Sonia. Do you know who Nellie yes. Bly is? Tell me. She's a woman. She's a <gasps> she's a lady person and she lady. was a reporter. I can't believe they allow that to happen. What? There was a TV movie with Linda Pearl who plays Nellie Bly. Mm-hmm. She's also, uh, there's a drunk history about her. I'll, p- I'll put it in the Facebook group. <laughs> Elizabeth uh-huh. Jane Cochran was born May 5th, 1864. She's from the Allegheny part of Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh and from a big family, 10 kids. And she always wanted to be a journalist. And everybody said, you're a lady person. You can't be a journalist. And she Mm -hmm. said, fuck that. I'm going to be a journalist. I want to be a writer. And when she started writing, she basically had to go to all these reporters. And for women, they were like, well, you could write about fashion. You could write about homemaking. You could write about best recipes. You can write about how to get the stain out of the ring around the collar. You know, that kind of thing. And she's like, fine. And she got her year's experience. And then she's like, please, I want to write about something else. And eventually, she wound up at a place called the New York World. And at the time, she moved to New York. She's in her early 20s. And let me show you a picture of her. Cute as a button. Oh, she is so cute. Isn't she cute? I'll I'll put pictures of her in the Facebook group. I would wear that dress. You would totally wear wear that dress. dress. Yeah, you would. (laughs) 
<laughs> she moves to New York. She's super young and like like I said, cute as a button. And she meets the it goes to the New York world and it's all these top editors are there. There's ten newspapers in New York at the time. This is just wow. a other world. And she goes in and she's like, I got stories you need to write. And they're like, get the hell out of here, lady. Scram. Amp scray. And she keeps yeah. coming in and keeps coming in. And then finally one of them says, okay, we think there's something happening at the, I'm going to say this, this is what it was called, but it was the Women's Lunatic Asylum. Yes. 1887. And it was at Blackwell's Island, which is Roosevelt Island now. And they basically, it was a mental health place where they would send people. And it was for women. And they thought there were, God, don't be shocked, they didn't treat people all that well in the what? asylum. So Nellie just, she took on the name Nellie Bly, by the way, because somebody said, you need some catchy name. You're, you know, this Elizabeth Cochran, Lizzie Cochran's not going to go. I think like, yeah. So they, so she took mm. on Nellie Bly. So she goes into a boarding house and she goes into the temporary one for just women. And she all of a sudden walks around. She perfected having crazy eyes, like walking around with like all booga 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 and talk. By the way, we all we all do that. So we don't get approached when we walk in public. This is what we do. <laughs> right. When we're on the subway, we don't want anybody yeah. to bother us. And she starts mm-hmm. talking to herself and she starts acting weird. And eventually she gets taken to the asylum and she stays there for 10 days. And she goes under an assumed name and she goes, she meets a serial killer named Lizzie Halliday. And she meets, she, she takes all these crazy notes and she writes about it for the New York world and called 10 days in a madhouse. And it wow. gets picked up all over the world. And they basically say it was called, they called it stunt girl journalism. And basically they had her just do shit. And they said, get Nellie Bly to do whatever you want. And so Nellie Bly mm-hmm. would just go out and just do crazy things. And yeah. she loved it. She absolutely just was loved it. So one of her things was traveling the world in like 80 days or whatever. Cause they had that, that book that came out traveling the world. So mm-hmm. she started traveling the world and it became a sensation around the world. She met Jules Verne in Paris. She starts traveling the world. And so other papers started chasing her, trying to beat her record. But she eventually came back to New York and she did it in like 79 days. And she had the world's record for a couple of years and then some dude broke her record. Yeah, But she was this amazing writer and then she meets an older man and by older i mean he was in his 70s and she was in her 30s and he was a millionaire whoa and she they get married and then he gets very sick and so she takes over his company and she didn't know business very well and so when he died she had to take over his business and the business went down the so oops she went back into journalism and she started being a reporter in world war one and went right back to the front lines and kind of got right back into, she was in Serbia and Austria, just a total fucking badass. Like just yeah. went right back into it. She, I don't want to go there. No, she would do it. She was just like, I'm, I'm done. Let's go. She come covered women's suffrage movement. She knew all those ladies out there. Sad to say she didn't live a long life. She had caught pneumonia uh-huh. in 1922. A lot of people got sick after World War I. There was the flu yeah. that came around and stuff like that. And she died in New York City at the age of 57. But And she's buried at Woodlawn Cemetery, where all my family is buried. Oh. But that is our not creep today, Nellie Bly. And there's a drunk history about her, and there's a couple of TV movies about her, and she just was this fascinating girl reporter, and just fought the good fight for people, and was awesome and amazing. Now that's a force for good. Right? Yes. Good pick, Margot. Well, thank you. And uh, 
all of y'all, if you have ideas for people we should cover or not cover, please reach out to us. <laughs> Don't cover this person. <laughs> we, you could, well, uh, what I mean by that, sorry, that was weirdly yes. stated. Creeps and non-creeps. That's what I mean. Yes. If you have ideas for creeps and non-creeps, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm tired. I've been doing a lot of interviews lately. Yeah. We, uh, we reach out to us in all those places I mentioned at the top of the show. You can also reach out to us on our email, whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. If you would like some stickers, honestly, ask us. We will drop them in the mail yeah. for you. And Sonia, where can they find you? You can find me at thesoniashow.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and mastodon maybe yeah we're testing the waters with mastodon which is one of those new social media things it could be a bust it could be great to- don't know. totally but i grabbed our stuff over there so we're there if you want to be there we're everywhere you want to be we're everywhere <laughs> where can people find you margo I'm at Brooklyn Fitchick for Twitter and Instagram. My site is brooklynfitchick.com. And I'm at Margot Donahue on the TikTok. And my book is called Filmed in Brooklyn. Thank you all that have bought it. And if you would like for me to send you a signed sticker so you could put it in your book, just send me an email and I will do that for you. And uh, once again, everybody, thank you so much. Stay safe. Don't be a creep. Creep. Thank you for listening to us talk about creeps. You can follow us at What a Creep Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But don't follow us too closely. You can email us your creepy stories at whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. But please keep your dick pics to yourself. <laughs>